question one has been asked by Dre, 9085, 9085, thank you Dre. He has asked, or she, um, what got you into photography and teaching maths? So, uh, what got me into photography? I realized that I've always really been into it. Um, it's just, uh, I never had a time where I could really focus in like and channel my energy right into it. So, um, yeah, it just happened uh, when I got injured from footy and I couldn't play for a year because I tore my ACL and had a reconstruction. So I got a DSLR. 2000, end of 2014, start of 2015, that's when I started shooting landscapes. And then yeah, grew from there. What got me into teaching maths? Uh, funny story, so I finished my university degree at the end of 2017, and I, um, well, I just started hustling and trying to find relief jobs. And then um, I found one at Balladura Community College. Shout out BCC, hi guys. Um, and I started doing relief and then at the start of term two um, I did two weeks uh, teaching year eight um, this was last year year eight maths so any students that are currently in year nine BCC I probably taught you that maths if, if anyone's from that maths class I don't know any of their names um, it's like ages ago now over a year ago so many students anyway um, I came up with a thing called the accountability sheet. Now, um, I know that Gary Vee has been talking about it recently, like heavily, the accountability stuff. But back then, trust me, I did not know who he even was. And I discovered that the way to get the students to work is to keep them accountable somehow. And I created an, an accountability sheet. Now, keeping the story short for this one, um, the accountability sheet was to pretty much check off where they were up to at the start of the lesson and then check off where they got up to at the end of the lesson. And that seemed to work very well because I just sent that to the main teacher and he was like, bro, you got these guys to work, nice. And then after that, I got booked out for the rest of the term uh, at the school and they, they, they liked me and uh, they said that I had uh, good behavior management skills and also they learnt the, the stuff they needed to learn. And then before the end of the term, um, they offered me a contract, um, one term, so term three, 2018 at BCC. And they offered me a couple of senior school, year 11 and year 12 maths classes. And those were challenging because some of those students were quite like tough, or not tough, but like uh, entitled and also they didn't really care. Now I managed to turn some of them around and it was my first year of like out of the job, um, out out into the workforce as a teacher post graduation, and then um, you know we were wrapping things up towards the end of uh, term three, and I'm just like, oh, I wonder how term four is going to go because normally relief people aren't hired in the last term because of uh, all these um, all these elements like year twelves are finished up, year elevens are halfway done, and they don't really need relief teachers because the, the staff that lose the load of the senior kids just take up relief teaching. So that's what happened. Uh, and oh, that, that's what I was like, okay, this is gonna happen. Then a few other things that I'm not gonna mention. Um, and on the last day, on the second last day of term three, the administration came up to me and said, hey, can we speak to you in the office? And I'm just like, okay. And then um, they offered me a contract again. They offered me term four, full, full term, like 10 weeks. And I was just like, what, really? Like, yeah, like I'm keen. However, one week, one week prior to that, um, the, the school, uh, another school called Joseph Bank Secondary College had um, uh, a maths, uh, a, a position available. And my fiance's friend, whose boyfriend works out as a maths teacher and I know him already like we've we've mingled a little bit and he got the job there like already and so he talked me up into it and also by luck and I, I say it's luck the head of maths there is also um, Eastern European so we already had that connection because I'm from Russia she's from um, um, Paul, Romania and uh, yeah like we bonded hard and it was like it was like a walk-in, easy five-minute interview. And then, I mean, I didn't know any, any of that at the time, obviously, but um, what had happened was back at Balladura Community College, I just said to them, hey guys, 
I accept your offer, however, give me 24 hours, I have one interview. One interview at another school, and the only difference is that that interview is for a permanent position. Now, one term contract, where you are no idea what's going to happen post that contract, and not getting anything for six weeks over the school holidays, versus permanent job. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go for this interview and see what happens. Three hours after the interview, the um, principal called me and she said, we'd love to have you. You're welcome on board. And I'm just like, good, thanks. So yeah, I got the job and um, spent my last day at um, Balladura and yeah, it was, um, it, it's just it's just how it is. It's just what ha how it happens. I did say to Balladura, I said, hey guys, um, well, I will accept a permanent job if you upgrade it from a contract right now. And unfortunately, they weren't in a position to do that. And that's not my fault or anything. That's not, you know, it's just life is. So um, so for any kids watching from Balladura, um, I didn't lose my job there. I didn't quit. I didn't leave because I hated the school. I love the school. You guys are awesome. Um, but for a career choice, it was the smarter option to go for a permanent position. And getting a permanent position first year out of uni is... It's unheard of, like it's gold, especially not without going to countries. So yeah, um, thanks for the question, Dre. That was a great one. There's a story about last night's stream. Um, we hit 100 viewers for the first time. I've only been streaming live on TikTok for about a week and uh, this is my fourth episode. I didn't record last um, yesterday's episode, regrettably. However, we did get uh, a couple of screenshots thanks to a few people. Um, Harry and Rhiannon um, got the screenshots uh, to me first of my 75 uh, online milestone and my 100 uh, online milestone. So. Uh, I guess it's upwards and onwards from here. We're cruising currently at 55 online, and uh, I mean it'd be great to get up to 100 again. That'd be that'd be dope. Um, but uh, it's like a milestone. You've hit it. Now I'm like cruising at mid 50s, and like 50 people are watching me live. That's crazy. That's crazy. And a week ago, nobody knew who I was. And I'm also getting Instagram messages saying, love your stuff, you inspire me. You know, this is what I want to do. This is this is goals. This has been goals forever. Um, you know, I, the kids at school, and I told my year sevens today that I'm not going to be a full-time teacher next year. They were pretty sad about it. And, and as, as, as much as it breaks my heart, you know, like I've got to do me first. I want to see what I want to do if it's exactly what I want to do. If I go and give it a go and do my photography and videography full time, and uh, it is for me, then I'll put teaching in the back pocket. It's always going to be there. Um, but until then, I need to know, otherwise it'll be... Oh, sorry. The fly flew into my thing as I did that and pinched it. Bye bye. Uh, but yeah, I need to know, I need to scratch that itch. Otherwise, I feel like I might resent myself and regret it, you know what I mean? So, yeah, just an update for you. 100 people have viewed me at the same time, and last night we got up to 1,100 people across the one hour that have tuned into me. Lord Harra, Harry, one of the OGs, has asked me, um, what's the one thing that people misunderstand about you? So back when I was a footy player, um, a footy player, um, I played in the Waffle for eight years, and uh, you know, you get you get into the scene and you get into like the um, the culture, and, and then they start labeling you as a footy guy, a footy boy, a typical footy guy who, you know, um, m uh, fools around and isn't really serious with their relationships and stuff like that. There's so many like cliches and stereotypes, and I didn't like it. I didn't like the fact that I would um, meet someone at uni and talk to them, and they're like, oh. Oh, you play you play footy? Oh, you know, there's other people. Obviously, they're like, oh, you play footy? That's awesome, you know. Um, but yeah, I um, I was always labelled as Wilson. <laughs> I was always labelled as a footy player, the typical footy player. And I'm like, I don't like that. But the fact is, um, I didn't like to really go out after footy. I was sore and I wanted to go home, whereas the boys always went out, always. And I just wanted to rest up and chill out, play video games, do my thing. Um, but this is before I did uni. This is before I did in my photography. And then, yeah, I focused. I focused. I didn't drink that much at all. I still don't really do that either. 
and that's when I really improved my footy craft and then uh, obviously injury came in and stuff like that but uh, yeah I um, my, my biggest misunderstanding is when people label me something I'm not and yeah people spread rumors about you and now I'm like eh, it's not really a bother like if someone thinks something about me I'm like well, you don't know me you don't know me what you saying what you saying come sit down let's have a chat let's get to know each other and then see if your opinion is the same still um, but the other thing as well and this is a good bit of advice to you guys is if someone ever um, talks uh, bad about you and spreads rumors about you and they're not open-minded to talk to you in person one-on-one -on -one, um, then it's really not worth the battle because you're never going to get through to them they personally want to attack you for some reason they're using their time to try and waste your time now that is a complete waste of time so yeah and that's when I figured that out that fear or that um, one thing that people misunderstand about me that was eventually my fear I was just like yeah that's their problem not mine the end Thank you, Harry, for that question. Kevy's Island, uh, hang on, Kev, good thanks. Kevy's uh, asked me, what is the most important thing you've learned from your students? Um, I mean, going back to last year, I taught a few tough students um, from other schools and uh, they taught me um, by, like, by, de by design, um, to be more persistent. I've always had confidence. I've always had um, mm, patience. And, uh, but yeah, persistence is definitely another one, which is kind of similar in the same category as patience, but yeah, persistence. So not giving up on that student. Like I'd never lose my patience. I'd raise my voice, last resort, but then that's it. And then uh, yeah, persistence works because later, later, on those students become like they want to be involved um, they're like oh this teacher's actually not that bad because when you leave then they realize oh damn he's actually that he's actually decent and then they'd message me on instagram and stuff after they, gra they graduate and ask if i can be their reference true story so persistence with those students and i do tell them this in my class right now even today i, I said to a student don't be a bin kid because one day if you put in the effort and you want a refer, refer, referee, refer, yeah, referral for a job, I'll, I'm happy to give you a, ref, a referral. But you have to put in the effort here and you can't be lazy because if you are, that's what I'm going to say to them. Oh, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I taught him last year. Yeah, he was quite lazy and didn't really get the work done. So, yeah, uh, sorry to, to bust you, um, to, to kill your vibe, but yeah. And, um, He's not really that motivated and he gets the he doesn't really get the work done last minute. Hang up. Right? Films the Future 15 has asked me, what is my favorite movie and favorite scene? My favorite movie of all time, and I can tell that it's my favorite movie because anytime it's on air, which is actually like every six months, um, is the Shawshank Redemption. And uh, my favorite scene is also from that movie. It's more a narration towards the end of the movie where um, uh, the main character, um, Andy, says, get busy living or get busy dying. Now, I'm starting to think that it wasn't actually Andy. I'm thinking it was Red, which was played by Morgan Freeman, one of the goats of acting, um, greatest of all time. And um, he, yeah, one of them two said, get busy living or get busy dying. And that stuck with me forever because, you know, if you're doing nothing, are you actually living? You know, and you can relate that as as students, as kids um, at school. Like, yeah, you don't want to be at school, but what else could you do? Can you get a job? Can you get a full time job? Year year seven, year eight, year nine, probably not. It's not. You, you should you should stay at school. Year ten, yes, but are you ready? Do you think you're ready? There's a lot of students out there who are in year 10 who are not ready for, or who are not made for the school system. And you will figure that out pretty quickly. But once you finish school or once you get out of school, it's no longer a holiday. You gotta pay taxes, you gotta you gotta work hard, and you can't talk back to your boss, you can't be late, 
if there's uniform required, you have to be perfect every time. And it's not even about uniform, it's about safety equipment, especially if you're leaving school early because it's probably most likely a trade. And if it's a trade, then it's definitely have to be uniform. You have to wear a flannel t-shirt, you have to wear protective gear, you have to wear steel cap boots. Otherwise you get hurt. And if you get hurt, you can't work. And if you can't work, you don't get paid. If you don't get paid, you don't eat. That's it. Get busy living or get busy dying. So right now, if you're a student and you're watching this, get busy learning the things that you need to learn. And if you find it irrelevant, well, hey, we do that. We, we take the L sometimes, but sooner or later, one, ta one day it will come back. I'm a perfect example. And I'm not saying this will happen to you, but maths wasn't my favorite subject. I had tutoring in maths for high school. I was terrible. And it clicked, it started to click. But I was like, once I finished that, I was like, thank God that's over. You know, finished my year 12, got my waist, and away I went. And then years later, I'm a maths teacher. Funny that. Um, am I the best maths teacher? Eh, I could probably know more about maths and different tactics, but you know, it's problem solving. And that's what I relate my, my, my maths learning to. I can go through every single subject and tell you how it's relevant to you in real life. Um, but the main thing is, is effort. If you learn how to do effort, there's always going to be parts of a job that you, you're, you're doing, whether it's a, working at Macca's, whether it's working in retail, whether it's a job of your dreams, there's always one aspect of a job that you won't like as much as the rest. And you have to do it anyway, regardless. And you have to learn how to do that. So if you're at school and you've got a crappy subject that you really don't like, you've got to put up with it and you've got to learn how to deal with it. Okay? Because one day, if you do well, um, you'll be able to have that persistence, that patience, and all of the stuff that I've been talking about that I've achieved because I've just put my head down and did it. Okay? Um, is the school system perfect? No. They're developing it. They're evolving slowly. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, find something that interests you. And if you can't, then you're not looking hard enough and you've got to try a million different things before you can knuckle down and be like, this is my jam right here. This is my passion and I'm gonna go for it. Thank you for the question. What makes me feel accomplished uh, by Lord Harrow? Um, what makes me feel accomplished? The thing that gets me going, the thing that makes me feel accomplished is the fulfillment that I receive from the other person involved. So let's say um, if a student learns something that day and they go, oh, I get it now and then they just go quick and they have a smile on their face, that's that's my sense of accomplishment. But for me personally, with everything that I'm doing, I celebrate my winnings, but I never really feel accomplished because for me, every day is always day one. I don't stop. I mean, I go on holidays and take breaks and stuff, but when I get back to it, I don't stop. I'm, I'm like, yep, start again. Yep, start again. Cool, I've reached the next level. Yep, it's day one again. Let's go again. So yeah, thank you. So the next five minutes, we go super quick and I answer every question and I put that on um, the live uh, YouTube episode and I'll mention every username that answers a question, big or small. Here we go, three, two, one, let's do it. Uh, the, Halloumi, uh, the Halluminati 14, 14 says, will you have a New Year's resolution for 2020? I already have one right now and it's a seven day turnaround for all my photography jobs. How much money do you make as a teacher? I make $2,100 a week, uh, a fortnight after tax. What keeps you motivated for photography? Um, the motivation to improve, to excel, and also when I post my photos, people like people like them. You know, that's that's my motivation, motivational sort of stuff. Um, do you want a son? Yes, I do. I want a daughter as well. I want the whole collection. Who is the worst AFL team in your opinion? Probably currently the Gold Coast Suns. Uh, what motivates you to continue doing teaching? The kids. Best thing about photography, the traveling. Uh, besides Perth, what state would you like to live in? Um, Brisbane or Melbourne? Uh, thank you. Oh, guys, I forgot to mention your names. Can you make a TikTok with your year sevens on the last day of school? Yes, I will, Tom. Uh, Kevin Zalden said, do you have kids? No. Uh, would, uh, would you put them in your TikToks? Absolutely. Um, do you like the MCU? Uh, no idea what that is. Um, Team Gather says, I love you. I love you too. Uh, Cameron McDermott says, would you travel around Australia? Yes, but I wouldn't travel by car. 
Um, Harry, do you play golf? Uh, I do. I have played golf before. I played a few nine holes with a few peeps. I like going to the driving range too. Would you ever grow a uh, full beard, says Joel. Yes, I would. And I have before, previously. Um, no, 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 no. Oh, Marvel Cinematic Universe? Yeah, one of my friends works for Disney and we talk about it all the time. Uh, Bad Apples, what motivates you to... Do oh, you already asked that question. Um, Fills Me Future 15, what was your... Oh, too many comments. What was your scariest thing you saw in the car? Uh, probably someone running across the road real quick. Uh, what's your favorite shoe brand by Joel? Uh, Jordans. Where in Australia I've driven to Uluru? I've been to all the cities. Are you strong? Yes. How do you deal with a uh, bad teacher? I just do my own thing. Um, sorry, guys. Um, this question's going super quick. Um, favorite brand of car and breed of dog? Favorite brand of car, probably Volkswagen. Breed of dog, probably Boxer. Um, Disney Parks character, would you want to play? Probably Goofy um, or Daffy Duck. Uh, what's your favorite type of dog boxer? Favorite TV show, Prison Break or Suits? How long have you been teaching? Two years. Show us your shoes. I agree, Cameron. Let's show us these people these shoes.